are a significant investment in the landscape. Not only do they cost more to purchase, but they also add a great amount of both aesthetic and an economic value to our landscapes. So we want to make sure that we protect these investments, especially during times of drought. Now the most common problem we see with trees during drought is the failure of young trees to become established. But larger trees can also suffer from drought conditions. The most common symptom we see of drought stress is the yellowing of the foliage. We can also see leaf drop and sometimes the trees will drop all of their leaves as a way to cope with this drought stress. We tend to see severely stressed trees begin to lose their leaves from the bottom up and from the inside of the crown outward. In times of drought, trees will produce less and grow less. And if we look at the cut stump of, a, of an old tree, it's easy to identify years of drought because the tree rings are smaller, indicating they had less resources available to grow. Now a lot of people, a lot of homeowners are concerned if their trees have dropped their leaves and certainly it's important, we want to pay attention to that, but it's important to know that a single year of drought is not likely to kill a tree. Many, many repeated droughts over decades can weaken the tree to a point where it will eventually succumb to death. But a single year, we shouldn't be too worried about and there's a few things we could do to manage that tree. Leaf drop is a coping mechanism that trees use to overcome drought stress. By dropping their leaves, they're going to lose less water to the air through transpiration and evaporation. And so we'll lose those leaves and be able to retain any moisture that's locked away inside the bark. In the fall, as the weather cools a little bit and hopefully as the rain begins to fall, we'll see many of those trees that have dropped their leaves begin to re-sprout new leaves and new growth. So if you have a tree or even a shrub that's lost all of its leaves, uh, don't immediately assume it's dead. What you want to do is look at the plant and if you can still see green buds and if you scrape uh, the bark or crack, cut a twig and you see that there's some green inside, that means the plant is still alive and once we get some water, it can recover from the drought. Management practices can also help us deal with drought stress in our trees. One of the first things we want to do is look at the area beneath our trees. When we have grass or weeds growing underneath trees, those plants are competing for the same water and nutrients that our trees need to grow. Studies show that this competition can reduce tree growth by up to 50%. It also impacts the root development. When we remove the competition beneath a tree, we find that roots spread out wider, they also grow deeper, and they're covering a larger volume of soil. This means that there's more area for the tree to draw water and nutrients. Now one of the things we want to look at is replacing that grass or weeds with mulch and there's a great mulch study out here we looked at uh, last season and this study really demonstrates the impact that mulch can have on trees. So this plot here is weedy um, so the treatment was different types of mulch and this one we had no mulch and the plots were not weeded. This plot has not been weeded all year. There's a little bit of, the weeds have died back from the drought stress, but if you look at the two trees here, um, we see we have an oak that's completely died due to stress, and a red bud that's hanging in there but not performing too, too well. And over here we have a mulched plot, and our oak is doing wonderful. Our red bud is also doing very well. So what we want to do is replace that weed or grass coverage beneath our trees with a three to four inch layer of mulch. And we want to extend that as much as five feet uh, in diameter around our tree. Now mulch has many, many benefits. The first thing that we're interested with regards to drought stress is that mulch helps the soil conserve moisture. If we compare a mulched and an unmulched soil, the water loss from that unmulched soil is 50% greater than the mulch soil. So you can imagine what an impact this has on our plants. Mulch also acts as a wonderful insulating blanket and it helps regulate and uh, moderate soil temperatures. So in the winter, they're a little bit warmer to promote root growth and in the summer, they're a little bit cooler. Trees actually prefer a little bit cooler soil for root growth, so this helps our, our plants establish a nice extensive root system. 
Now mulch also protects soil from compaction, particularly from falling rain or overhead irrigation. And if you look at an exposed soil, what we typically see is that a crust forms on the surface up to a quarter inch thick. And this will vary depending on your soil type. It's particularly bad in clay soils. And when we get this hard surface, what happens is when we do irrigate or get some rain, it has a harder time penetrating into the soil. It also reduces airflow, and of course we know that trees, and tree roots especially, need uh, oxygen in order to, to grow well. Now the last thing that mulch certainly has a benefit for is managing weeds. Research shows that by simply mulching a soil, we can reduce weed growth by over 90%. Irrigation, of course, is also very important in managing drought stress. Trees need a thorough watering every week during the growing season, and this can be either from natural rainfall or from supplemental irrigation. When we're irrigating a tree, we want to give it a very thorough, deep irrigation, and we want to irrigate the area that extends five feet beyond the drip line of a tree. Now the drip line of a tree is the area beneath the crown. So on this pawpaw, it would extend from here over to this side where the farthest branches uh, extend. And then of course when we're irrigating, we want to extend that an additional five feet all around the tree. So we're irrigating a very large area. It's best to do this once a week and very deeply. We want that water to reach down into the soil where the roots are growing. When we water deeply, the soil can retain that moisture longer. The moisture is in an area where the roots can uh, reach it as well. Now, many of us water just a little bit at a time, several times a week. And when we do this shallow irrigation, we encourage shallow rooting of our plants. But also, if we're only irrigating the upper inch of the soil, that's gonna dry within a day. So it dries much quicker than watering thoroughly. And there's several ways that we can do this. Um, if you don't have an irrigation system, there's several products that we can purchase. Uh, this is a, a tree donut, and this is good for small trees. We fill it with water, and it wraps around the tree like this. And there's a little opening on the bottom where the water just drips right out very slowly. So this is a good way to release the right amount of water uh, slowly over time so that it can penetrate into the soil. There's also an upright gator bag, and I have one here. Now normally we would uh, zip this, there's a zipper, and we zip it around the tree. And that would be good for a small tree, uh, but for a large tree like this, we would actually get several gator bags and zip them together around the tree. And this also has small openings on the bottom that let the water flow out very slowly over time. Uh, even a simple soaker hose works for trees, and these work well because they can extend uh, under the entire drip line you know, for a larger tree. Um, it's important to note that the water doesn't come out evenly throughout the entire length of a soaker hose, so you might want to move it around a little bit throughout the day as you're irrigating. And keep the pressure low so that you're getting a nice slow drip trickle of the water so it can penetrate deeply into the soil. Remember, trees are a very valuable investment in the landscape, and we want to make sure that we protect those during times of drought.